Hello and welcome to this video. I decided to start another series on this channel, something I wanted to do for more than 5 years, but ended never doing it. I always delayed it. Well, today is the day. It is called Driving the same car for 30 years. Originally the name was Driving the same car until it becomes a classic, but I guess it is too long. Or not. Well, as you can imagine, just by reading the title, this car must have three things. It is nice to drive, it does not give me any trouble, and it looks amazing, even 30 years later. Indeed, I really like its classic flowing lines. Technically speaking, it is 29 years and 11 months in my hands. It still takes one month to complete 30 years. I can remember perfectly being right here when my mother came in with the brochure in her hands. She told me they were thinking about buying that car. At that time, this bar was upstairs in the other side of the building in the street front. As soon as I saw it, I just said, please go for it. And she did. It was her car, as my dad did not like it, and he always thought it was too loose or not very safe for his standards. He bought an Audi A4 TDI instead. I was 17, 3 months away from being 18 and being able to take my driver's license. As soon as I was 18, I went for it. And after that moment, every time we did a trip, I was the driver. Brand new, and at that time it cost 22,500 euros, which in today's money would be the double. It was a mid to high end car at the time. There were a ton of other competitors' hot hatches, and this was the most expensive of those cars in this 1600cc class, but also one of the best built ones and certainly with one of the best engines of the market. My parents had it pretty much stock and only selected the AC as an extra, but the car always looked full extras from the outside and it looked like a football player car and, to some people at the time, it was too flamboyant. Well, almost. To be honest, I never liked the original wheels anyway. I loved the 2000 turbo ones. Note that these 1993 models were the last batch that came out of the factory without airbags. It was mandatory after 1994. The car was bought without the rear spoiler. That was only added 6 months later and it completely changed the look of the car. It is absolutely amazing how that element transforms the visual of the machine. It was the family car for some years, all our trips were done on it. On weekdays it was the car my mother took to work, so it only did 10 km a day and the engine barely got warm. Basically this is a Honda disguised as a Rover, I mean, mechanically it is all Honda while the aesthetics are British designed by the Rover guys. To me it is the perfect combination, I love its lines, while it drives great without major troubles. 
This D16 was the best 1600cc engine on the market in the late 80s and it was only beaten when Honda released the B16 VTEC engine in the early 90s. Other 1600cc engines at the time barely got 100 horsepower and simply could not compete. Obviously, things are different today and most cars are more powerful and faster. And most of them have turbos bolted to them. We call it evolution, I guess. It has always been a rare car. You never saw many on the road, even when they were new. Now, they are really scarce. The coupe, and that's how you read it, as it is a French word that means cut, was the flagship model of the Rover 200 series. It was released in October 1992, two years after the launch of the hatchback models. Later there was also the release of an estate model, the coupé, also known as Tomcat, as it was its codename in the factory, was also used in competition. I remember watching in Eurosport in the mid-90s the races where these cars competed against each other, in the UK and also internationally, mainly in Zandvoort and Spa. It also did beat 39 land speed records, and I remember the ad where they used those pictures and claimed that this was the fastest production car Rover ever made. Some years ago, I found one of these cars on sale. It's a target top car, so you can completely remove the top glass panels or simply open them as an open roof for air. I always use it open, whether it is sunny or raining. Usually, you have to be caught by a wind gust for water to enter there. Although it makes the car very noisy and rattly, it is one of the features I enjoy the most. In late 2001, I came home from studying abroad and I had sold my Toyota Starlet before leaving. So my parents decided to give me this car and its property. They tried to convince me to sell it and buy another one, but I simply refused. After that moment, I started paying all its taxes, insurance and all that good stuff. I confess that, sometimes, I am amazed how it did survive to my youth in such good condition. I always had a heavy right foot. I have never been participating in street races, but I wouldn't say no to a traffic lights battle or some little stupid things like that. But if I saw that I was battling a crazy guy, I would simply lift and let him go. I have never been that crazy. Once I saw one guy go blindly over a stop sign and going through the crossing at full speed. I never did those kind of crazy things. Well, stories of my youth days. Well, not all is good in 30 years, as you can imagine. As soon as the warranty expired and in my hands, one night, I was going to the movies with my friends and as soon as I started the engine and turned the steering wheel, a loud crack sound was heard and the steering became completely loose. It would turn easily without almost any pressure and would turn freely until stopping at the end of the steering rack. It was replaced afterwards for a new one. And, in a way, this was a good thing. New, this car had a very, very light steering. So light that it was not giving good confidence. I mean, if it is good in city traffic speeds, as soon as you go faster, it is not good at all. And it was not progressive. With this replacement, 
the steering was a little harder and it became much better to drive, but a little tougher while in parking maneuvers. Then, a year or two later, the ABS system stopped working and a yellow light appeared in the dashboard. This was really bad. Believe me, driving in wet cobblestones, and we still have a lot of those here. Whenever I had to do an emergency braking, my heart would come through my mouth even before my feet arrived to the braking pedal. Those were crazy days. That was a real nightmare. Then, in 2004, the car was stolen. That broke my heart. It was taken from the most touristic part of the city in a time when it was a kind of depressed area with very few people in the streets. After two years of works on those streets, and you could park there at the time, I was playing my music in an event there, and when I came out, my car was not there, but all others surrounding it were. A very bad situation, to say the least. I had the keys and the radio front panel. And that's it. It appeared 13 days later, 15 kilometers away, with a flat battery, but still in one piece. Oof. At least that. It had done about 60 kilometers. I guess a bunch of kids took it to get home instead of using an umbrella and taking the bus. Two condoms were missing as was the car manual and two hats. A cheap and stupid robbery. Anyway, I was happy I had the car back. In 2006, in Father's Day, I went to my parents' home to have dinner. I parked right in front of the main door. When I came out, my car was gone again, and a red Peugeot 205 was in its place. I remember asking myself, where the hell is the boot? It was stolen by a third grade thief. It appeared in a crazy neighborhood. He tried to take the radio out, but ended only destroying the central console. He only did destruction and took nothing. I bought another console from a crashed car and replaced it, but in later versions the ashtray and lighter were switched sides. I guess Rover stopped making left-hand drive consoles and simply put right-hand drive consoles to save money. This was the only difference after all. I also installed a good alarm system that cuts the fuel injection if not cancelled with the remote. After this, I tried to be more cautious. And we reached 2008. A terrible year for me. In 2008, I had the stupidest crash of my life. Well, it was at the time and I crashed in the exit of a highway at about 60 km per hour and I believe that there was an oil stain on the road because suddenly, mid-corner, I simply couldn't control the car and crashed. Not very hard, but crashed into the guardrails. I took it to the school park where I was going to teach, but then it never started again. It was my first time coming home on a trailer truck. Well, I decided to buy a new front bumper to replace the crushed one and I have been waiting for a month for parts and the repair. This taught me a lesson. The hard way. After this moment, I started searching for parts and I noticed that the car looked slightly different. It took me some time to find out what was it. The first version of the bumper was not available anymore and now I got a new air entrance that I didn't have before. Some years later I found a new grill in the UK, a very rare one indeed, that covered that hole and it looks quite exclusive now. I love it. This event changed everything. 
I never searched for the car in the internet until then. This was the moment when I discovered the Tomcat Club of Portugal, which was a club of owners of these cars. Everything changed after that. I really started to know the car after that. All tricks and tips. I started talking to people and learning a lot. Taking pictures to it. Something I rarely did before. Going to meetings and starting to know a little more about the car. Until then I was really... Just a simple user. There were international meetings where I met other coupe owners from abroad and there were tomcats with all kinds of look and style. The cars were even blessed. Yes, you heard me right. My car has been blessed two times now in these meetings. I was able to send my ABS pump to repair thanks to a friend I met in one of those meetings and since 2010 that I have the ABS running again. That was great. No more warning lights in my dashboard. It was an hydraulic problem and it was repaired in a shipyard by the hydraulic guy there and he didn't accept any money to do it despite my insistence. At the time, the shipyard was still a national facility, but was facing difficulties and there was no work. The employees were literally staring at the walls all the time, so when he did it, he did it on work hours and did not accept anything for it. A true honorable guy. Amazing story. I also bought some upgrades like clear side repeaters, the 2000 turbo version wheels and new sound system. Later, I also upgrading the braking system on the four wheels and the exhaust manifold. After that, not only the braking is stunning, but I also have better torque at lower revs. So I found myself using a higher gear than before when driving in the city. The car brakes much better than it accelerates, which is a kind of odd, but I prefer it that way. I had too many years without any confidence in the braking system. Usually I run it with a decat pipe, so without a catalytic converter, and I only install it when it goes to the annual inspection. When it goes, it passes without any trouble and the guys there, year after year, always ask if I want to sell the car. I have to say that in these years, I have lost the count on how many people asked how much I would want for it. I always reply the very simple sentence. This one is not for sale. It's a keeper. Some months later I went out at night and when I came back a policeman was near my car and alerted me that somebody tried to break my right window without success but did some heavy scratches there. The car behind did not have the same luck and had a broken window. The guy in the garage where it is parked did even worse by scratching the hell out of it. I replaced that glass later after a visit to the scrapyard. In mid-2009 I discovered that I had an oil leak, but thought it was a minor thing and still decided to go to teach 50 kilometers away. Really, really bad mistake. The car reached there, but on my way back, suddenly the engine stopped and... I had no oil left and broke the engine. That was the only time I had a problem with this car and it was me the problem, not the car. That was a costly mistake. 2000 euros for a complete repair. But it was my mistake, so I just went for it and repaired the car. Most people would not do it. The value of the car didn't justify it. But as I loved the car, never spent a lot of money on it and felt guilty, I didn't care for the money and went for it. 
After this, I decided to do an important upgrade and installed a 4-in-1 onboard computer as I call it. It reads oil pressure, oil and water temperature and also the voltage of the battery. My mechanic wanted to install it near the radio, but that's too low and I have to take the eyes out of the road to get a reading and that's not good for me. I decided to install it on the left side of the steering wheel, where there was a free space. With daylight, legibility is not great, but I am always aware of my surroundings. I never stop looking at my surroundings to read it. At night, it is wonderful and it changes its lights to orange, matching the car inner lighting. I always wash the car by hand and never by pressure. That damages the rubber seals. It only has been on the washing machines two or three times in its life and only when it was new. I take my time and do it properly. There are too many places to clean, inside and outside. I don't do it all the time, sometimes only two or three times a year, sometimes only once. It depends, but when I do it, I do it properly. I also upgraded the seals in the top glass. I used the bicycle inner tire and cut it to measure to do it. I upgraded the interior with some seats and door inserts. Technically, I bought them for another car. Hmm, yes, I bought another car just like this in 2009. You could call it a clone, same color, everything. It was a month older. I upgraded it but barely used it and four years ago I ended up selling it. Initially I bought it for parts, if ever needed. But since I have now so many parts in the warehouse and could not keep it there anymore due to lack of space, I had to let it go. I also did it because in 2011 I bought my dream car. The same car, but the 2000cc turbo version. The car that broke 37 land speed records. Yes, I had three at the same time. All the same model, but with two different engines. I spent a lot of money buying parts and then I gave it to my mechanic to do a huge revision to it and also some upgrades. It was part one of two of a big overhaul. Unfortunately, I barely used it as in 2016 I had an unfortunate moment and crashed it heavily and nearly ended up dead inside it. I just missed death for 10 or 15 centimeters. I broke a leg, ended in hospital, and had three surgeries as a fucking bacteria developed suddenly and it started with complications. This took some months to heal properly, but I was having nightmares for the first time in my life. I was constantly dreaming with the car and with the crash. The crash sound was banging in my head constantly. I always thought it was a remorse. I bought another one just like the one I crushed but in not so good condition and I am restoring it with time. Unfortunately I don't have much of that lately. Time is something I would love to buy. That car is currently parked and I only run on the red 216. That's my faithful daily driver. It is in the garage, always ready to go. I just change parts when there is need to. As an example, 
I replaced the original starter engine recently and it lasted for 28 years. They don't build them like that anymore. Unfortunately the new one apparently does not work so well and now sometimes it doesn't start on the first time. But it does immediately on the second, something it has never done before. It always started first time. Some days ago it took 5 attempts to start and yesterday started first time. I can't understand it. Anyway, it really does not give me any major trouble. I could even say any trouble at all. Well, not true. I just reminded myself that the electrical system has always been its worst part. Right now I have problems with the top interior light and it started very recently and I still did not find the problem. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's nothing major. Also the digital clock disconnects and restarts when I hit some bigger holes on the road. I think that is some bad soldering joint or something like that. My parents street is in heavy works for months now and there is where I do my work. So there are things to do and repair next months or even next year if they take too long. But these are normal things for a 30 year old machine that runs mainly in urban situations, sometimes with rough roads. I don't lose my sleep because of it. Once I went for gas and suddenly, well, it didn't start again. It was a dead battery and that can happen to any car. It also happened to other cars we own in the family. Apart from this kind of thing, nothing major. I never had a flat tire or puncture. It is really amazing. I still have the original Pirelli P6000 replacement tire in the boot. A full size tire. Can you believe it? It's not the best car ever done. It has a lot of plastic parts inside and by being 30 years old and counting with the amount of streets paved with cobblestones in this city, it is no wonder that it rattles a lot. By having a glass top and frameless door windows, it also does not help on this. But it is a nice car in the summertime and it runs and runs. Sometimes I don't use it for 3 weeks and then it goes for a 400 km trip. Sometimes a fast one if I am late. You just have to be careful with the fluids, obviously, and with gas. Apart from that, I have absolute confidence on it. Next big step is... In reality they are too. Gearbox and transmission rebuild and new paint. Except for 6 months, it has always been a garage car and that really helps to keep it in good condition. But it also has a cost. In these 29 years, I have spent more in garage fees than buying it brand new. Time took some time to pass through it. Until the mid 2000s, it still looked like a brand new car. Its lines really took some time to age. And it's the front who aged more. The new car's front lighting is very different looking and they have different shapes now. The back view was still modern until a few years ago when car design started to be outlandish and looking more like little spaceships. As a huge fan, I have a lot of stuff about this car. From the dealer's poster, to the catalogs, from stickers, to rare pictures, etc. In future videos, 
I will talk about some of its unknowns for a lot of owners, all the upgrades done and its maintenance. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your friends, leave a line in the comments section if you have something to say or ask, and subscribe for more videos like this. I see you in the next video. Take care.